What is up, YouTube? I am Shaq Central, and this is the Uniquely Hardcore Challenge. In this series, I am attempting to collect every unique item in Path of Exile, not just in the solo self-found game mode, but in hardcore as well. It's going to be a long grind, and it's going to be a ton of fun. So sit back and join me for today's unique experience. All right, first, first, uh, first beachhead went pretty well. Let's Let's deal with this now. Mid shot. Wow, that was enormously loud. And that's what happens when the loot filter absolutely loses its mind. But yeah, well, well. Oh my gosh, we did it. Uh, I was actually getting ready at the end of this map to do another unique roundup. We got probably another 10, 12 uh, uniques. And I ran into the last one. So, I mean, check with me because I'm, I'm like freaking out, stinging doubt. We got piercing truth, swirling fear, crippling grief, burning rage, lingering pain, stinging doubt. This is the last one. All right. And just like that, we have all six trials. All right, time for a quick uh, character update on the uh, Earth Shatter Champion. And then, as you can see, our unique tracker has continued to climb upwards. So we got a few uniques, but I wanted to just give a brief update on the character first. Uh, it's feeling really strong. We're about 85, just under 85, and well, not just under. We're about 85 and a quarter. Uh, it feels, like I said, really, really strong. Uh, very high defenses. The life is just continuing to climb like very well. Um, basically, all of the the last like five nodes or so in the next five are pretty much all life. So, should be really nice. Should be up about uh, 6k when just this little batch is finished. And as we continue to up upgrade the gear, it'll climb. Uh, I have now done one Maven fight, mo like multi-boss fight, in all eight uh, regions. So you can see we've got all the trees unlocked here. All the trees have one uh, thing assigned to it. Thankfully, with the new update, they made it really clear uh, what is assigned where because it used to be pretty much invisible. This is where we're at for completion. It's not great, uh, but I've been focusing on... Uh, filling out the atlas here so that we can, once we start jumping now, now, now I can socket this stuff back in and we can start jumping around and getting watchstones really quickly. But I wanted to make sure that we got the initial Maven fights done, uh, as we move on. And also I was getting other characters prepared. So we have multiple things to do. So the character feels really strong. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do after this is going to be Uber lab and provided the character survives, which I think he will. It's feeling pretty good. Uh, we will start getting into getting as many watchstones as we can as quick as we possibly can. So that being said, let's check out the new uniques. Most of these, I want to say, with the exception of like this one, this one, which is obviously a corruption, I think all of the rest of them were found in uh, Replica. So we're starting to see a lot from there. Uh, I've had two so far that have been like the full Replica thing. So I have another probably six uniques on uh deferment right now because we found one that was all uniques and i put like eight of them on deferment so all right uh the searing touch this is a huge fire dot multi um and increased fire and plus two to level of all fire this is basically like the ideal uh what you would be looking for those mods if you were playing like for instance occultist uh vortex uh but also works insanely well for fire skills uh mon Montregul's Grasp. I always mispronounce that. I always say Montregul, but it's Montregul's Grasp uh, is a zombie. I mean, you can literally see it. It's a zombie arm, but it's a zombie themed uh, weapon. It's a scepter. You have a reduced maximum number of raised zombies. So you're going to have half the zombies you would normally have, but they have massive increased life. They have massive all resists. Uh, they are huge. They literally, the character model is bigger. Uh, but the big thing is, enemies killed by them explode. So you have, it's kind of an explodey chest, but not really. It's not a chest. It's for your zombies and stuff that they kill explodes. And they have massive more fizz damage. Uh, let's go with the other weapon. Nykta's Lantern uh, is another fire thing. Gives plus two to level of fire gems, just like the Searing Touch. Uh, supports gems with fire penetration. So you have like a fourth... Um, 
and and with the with the mod below that too it's it's kind of like having uh almost like two two support gems on it so you almost get a five link out of your out of your scepter uh and gives more spell damage and all that so you you get a lot of fire damage it's a very good leveling item let's move on to gloves we got a snake bite a lot of uh life and then it wants you clearly to have frenzy charges you get attack speed accuracy uh chance to poison and damage over time multiplier per poison or sorry for four poison per frenzy charge all those are per frenzy charge uh so very exciting and then you're as long as you're at max your attacks have 60 percent chance to poison uh veruso's battering rams is a pretty high level uh titan gauntlet a lot of attack speed a lot of armor a lot of movement speed um, you have more stun duration on you, so you want to make sure you, that you cannot uh, be stunned. And then you have increased melee damage per endurance charge, and you cannot be stunned while you're at max endurance charges. And Meganord's Vice, we now have both of the Meganord's item. We have the Girdle and the Vice we both got recently. Uh, gives a huge increase to strength, and then increase to fizz damage. And as long as you have at least 400 strength, which this makes a lot easier, this takes care of a quarter of it for you, uh, you regenerate 2% of your life per second. Well, pretty defensive, pretty good. Heartbreaker, we're inching closer up on those daggers. We've found a lot of daggers so far. Very high spell damage. Uh, energy shield on your dagger, which is pretty uh, kind of unique. 10% um, faster start of energy shield recharge, and then your spells have culling strike. So it has like a free link on it uh, that's global to all of your spells, not just the ones in this weapon. Uh, the faster start of energy shield recharge is very cool. I've messed around with this in the past, trying to make an energy shield recharge almost instantly build. Uh, Coralito Signature is another cool pickup. Uh, it's based on poisons, basically. While the flask is up, you have a chance to poison on hit. Uh, you take chaos damage per second, but instead of your critical strikes dealing extra damage, uh, you have perfect agony during the flask effect. And perfect agony is that your modifiers to your critical strike multiplier apply to your damage multiplier for ailments. Uh, so basically... It wants you to be using the flask to poison and then does a lot of damage with poisons. Unstable payload. It gives you a chance for your traps to trigger an additional time. Pretty pretty basic tool. That's literally all there is to it. Uh, Diaden Dawn uh, has a lot of life and a couple of resists. Uh, and then it basically is one of those uh, kind of dueling fire and ice uh, type items. You get attack leech against chilled enemies. Your ignites deal damage 35% faster, but the downside to this one, it's very big. You cannot deal any physical damage. It deals no physical damage. Uh, we got another jewel corruption. I was corrupting crimson jewels, trying to get uh, corrupting blood implicit, and wound up with Enid Ziri's reign. So I believe this is the third jewel already that we've gotten from the corruptions while I've been trying to roll corrupting blood jewels. So Ziri's reign gives you increased fall skill effect duration. And finally, for the new ones, Apraxis. Uh, huge mana. Like, just, it's basically all mana. You can read through it. It's all mana. It gives you max mana. gives you a lot of mana regen. Makes your skills cost less. And 8% uh, of the damage that you take, which I believe, is that the one that... Oh, no, it's not the one that has a range. Uh, so 8% of the damage you take, you get back as mana. So all these are pretty cool. These are all new, and we're up to 213. And if you notice, I got my second clay shaver. So uh, in terms of playing strong meta builds and just running over the content, uh, yeah, at some point soon here, uh, Carrion Golem's incoming because having both of those Carrion Golems is still really strong, and I'm really excited to get another Clash. All right, time for fight one. I am uh, maybe nervous isn't the right word. I have not done very many Uber Lab fights with melee characters so this should be very interesting learning experience hopefully not dying experience There you go, just avoid the slashes. Alright, we found it. Last one. Oh, I'm scared. This just makes me nervous being being melee like this. Oh 
I'm gonna die. insane oh my gosh and unclench hole oh, my goodness that was the worst that was the worst Whew. all right we did it that may have been my first ever melee Uberlab takedown of Izaro. I'm not even joking. I literally never play melee. That was terrifying. But we did it. Let's see what we get. Okay. Okay. That's all. Yeah. I was going to say. I, did, I was not going for a key run. I was going for a survive. Hey. There we go. That was our uh, 12 challenges too. Cool. Actually, like, very cool. What do we get? Oh, ritual... Where's Ritual? Heck yeah. So as I've continued uh, filling out the Atlas here, it, the uniques just keep pouring in. Uh, again, most of these are from the Rituals themselves. Uh, a couple of them were drops. I think the Hallowed Ground was a uh, world drop. Uh, and I've gotten several Bitter Dreams, things like that, that have just dropped on the ground uh, in the last few maps. But uh, in terms of map completion, we're getting up close to half of the Atlas here. We're at 72 of just filling out the last uh, tier threes and tier fours, and then we're going hard on uh, watchstones. But this is where we're at uh, with these. You can see we're up to over 230 now, which is crazy. Um, so yeah, let's just let's just take a look at these. Uh, Debian's Dirge it adds a ton of cold damage. Uh, doesn't have any any fizz things, but it adds a ton of cold damage, and then it gives you a bunch of buffs if you've used a war cry recently. Camarius Mall, I've actually found two of like back to in back to back maps. Uh, adds a lot of fizz damage. It adds some cold damage, uh, and then gives you more crit and gives you basically if you're if you're freezing enemies, uh, gives you increased rarity and you do even more cold damage with attack skills. So pretty good to pair this with like itself and just uh, do a, an absolute ton of attacking cold damage if that's your thing. Uh, Ungil's Gouch is a dagger. Gives you uh, additional block chance while you're dual wielding, so you can do both of these and uh, one of these in each hand. Get a ton of additional attack block chance. Uh, gives you dexterity and a bunch of fizz damage and a little bit of lightning damage and some crit. So not bad early leveling item. Speaking of early leveling items, level zero unique. You don't need any requirement to equip it. Uh, last Resort, the Nailed Fist. Gives you life uh, gain on attack in the implicit. Gives you more attack speed when you're, well, sorry, increased attack speed uh, when you're on low life. And then basically just does actually a whole lot of damage, regardless of the low life benefits, which, again, can be kind of nice. Just has a lot of fizz damage uh, for a low level weapon. Bitter Dream is kind of a crazy one. You can see there it does nothing except give socketed gems a million supports. Uh, and Bitter Dream has this unique quality where when you sell a Bitter Dream, actually I'll demonstrate this right now, when you sell a Bitter Dream you get all of the gems that it is supported by. So kind of a very cool uh, vendor recipe. It can get kind of annoying <laughs> if you sell it without meaning to, uh, but it's a cool weapon. just has a ton of cold supports. Uh, for quivers, we got two. We got Soul Strike, uh, which adds a ton of cast damage to attacks and gives you really faster start of energy shield recharge. Uh, the rate that you recharge is slower, but the, the start is incredibly faster and gives an absolute ton of ES. Uh, so something like an attack-based uh, cultist would be really good with this. Craghead, uh, I actually was able to get two of these, which is great because there is a prophecy. I don't have the upgrade yet, but there will be a prophecy to upgrade this uh, one time. So we have both of the bases that we need. Uh, it's just a low-level quiver that gives you uh, reduced projectile speed, uh, but adds a whole bunch of fizz damage to your early bow attack, so very nice. Uh, for gloves, we got Kalisa's Grace. Supports all the gems in it with faster casting, gives you a whole bunch of life. And then if once you've spent a uh, total of 800 mana, you get a uh, plus 2% to critical strike chance. So uh, pretty good spell crit uh, pair of gloves there. World Carver uh, is one of the uniques that gives you like its own kind of unique skill. Uh, you trigger a level 20 arcane wake after you spend 200 mana. So another one that wants you to spend a specific amount of mana uh, as a bunch of life. And then this one is kind of interesting. It, it 
gives you more of a benefit for each map item modifier affecting the area. So if you uh, if you want to make a build out of this, it's kind of one of the unique ones. I, d I don't know that there's I don't think there's anything else in the game that gives you benefits for each map item modifier that's affecting an area, but World Carver is kind of unique in that aspect. And then Worm Sign is another one with Socketed Gems get supported by something. This time it's Concentrated Effect. And then it wants you to do Endurance Charges. Uh, you, you have less mana cost when you have Endurance Charges uh, for each one. And then once you get up to your max Endurance Charges, you gain Rampage. But when Rampage ends, you would lose all of them. So kind of a pseudo Rampage item. Doesn't naturally give it, but you can get it pretty easily if you want to build with this. Uh, Broken Crown is the only helmet we found. So, uh, Socket of Gems gets supported by Cast on Death, so not great for what we're doing here in Hardcore. Uh, but it gives you all attributes. It gives you a whole massive chunk of Chaos Resistance. No other resistances or life, but it gives you a huge chunk of Chaos Res. For Boots, we found Gang's Momentum. Uh, decent move speed, 25% is pretty good among Uniques. A lot of them are 15 or 20%. gives a ton of fire resistance, and you have a lot, uh, a high chance to ignite with a lot more damage against ignited enemies. Uh, for body armor, we found, I don't even know how to pronounce this. I've tried before. Zon Zondithus? Zondithus, or Z I don't think it's Zan because of the H, but I think it's Zondithus Kassik. Uh Adds a bunch of lightning damage to your attacks. Gives you a bunch of energy shield for the part of the uh, campaign where you would be using that. Gives you a whole bunch of chaos resistance as well. And you make consecrated ground when you block, so you want to use a shield with it. Speaking of shields, Thousand Teeth Timu. Uh, gives a bunch of life. Has higher chance to block. And then you reflect a whole bunch of fizz damage to attackers on block. There's a wide range, but in general, it's a lot. Uh, and then 10% of the damage that you reflect to them, you gain back as life. So if you can get very high block chance, you're going to be reflecting a lot of damage, potentially killing enemies, and you're going to gain a lot of that back as life. Uh, Wheel of the Storm Sail, on the other hand, is a very low-level shield. Gives you increased rarity uh, and gives you a higher chance to block. Uh, and makes your curse skills a little bit better, but also makes it so... Uh, curses on you are uh, a little bit stronger as well. Or they last a little bit longer, I should say. Static Electricity gives a whole bunch of lightning damage to attacks, and uh, you want to put it in uh, Dexterity part of the tree because it adds lightning damage to attacks based on how much Dexterity is allocated in its radius. Uh, sit, sit hit breath, sit, side hit breath. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, is another one of the no-level requirement uniques you could wear at level 1. Gives you a bunch of benefits to your minions uh, and a little bit of cold damage on top of that. So early minion amulet is kind of nice. And then a hollowed ground uh, unique map. Boss drops additional maps. Gives a ton of experience. I'm assuming we're going to get a bunch of these offered from Zana throughout the course of the league. If it gets closer and I want the map completion, we'll just run it. But for now, it's going in the tab and we're at 200 and 31 uniques. Not a bad start at all. In all seriousness, just completely throwing this out there. Um, I don't think there's a, a popular guide out right now for Earthshatter Champ. And uh, I kind of love it. Just like, just food for thought. Why? Whoo! I don't even understand... Can I kill this thing? Oh. Uh, no. It's very, it's very cheap. Uh, it's weird, like... I don't know. In terms of answering this question, the thing that makes it a little strange to answer is... It wasn't my league starter. And it's the first time I've leveled it. <sighs> Wait, did I not kill the other one? Am I an idiot? <laughs> so it wasn't... Yeah. 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 I forgot there was four. I killed the three and I was like, we're done here. Alright, let's kill this dude. I popped that up too early. It's okay. Don't like that. Don't like that. I don't like that. War cries, save me. Oh my god. Got him. Oh, because it, it popped right up. Okay. Did 
Did you see that? He didn't- he- he hung in the air until I came back within range. I don't even understand how that works. That was garbage. That was- that's a garbage mechanic. Did you see that? I dodged out of his little range. He literally hovered in midair until I came back in. That's not even a thing. That's not even like- you can't even play around that. Alright, so this is the solution I'm coming up with for taking care of... Uh, my mana issues because I still haven't even found a single unveil for the Elrion's minus cost and I want to replace this ring uh, But unfortunately that is my only source of mana leech at the moment So when you go in here We're gonna go like this and we're gonna get spirit void now spirit void is this mana leech note So actually a huge amount of mana leech uh, and you get even more recovery per second. So that's gonna let us uh, probably start using dread banner as another aura and uh, so that'll be really nice. It's it's not like ideal, uh, but it lets us replace that ring with a vermilion ring that I just found. So that is also really nice. Now we can uh, now we can go craft this thing and uh, pop it in. So pretty pretty nice. All right, it is time for another unique roundup. Uh, we did a few more watchstones. Uh, just picked up the eighth one, and we've got uh, I believe it ended up being like eleven. I mean, I can I guess I can just count them. Yeah, about eleven new uniques. Um, and a few more picked up the second versions for the faded ones. So let's check these out. Um, I, I will say as I, as we get more of the like quote unquote world drops where we're starting to get less often, uh, new uniques and starting to have to farm specific content for it. I'll probably be doing these just like one or two off as I find them, like come out of a map. I'll just, uh, record what they are and, and mark them down. But, uh, doing this in a batch kind of works. So at least for now. So this is Cyro Shards. This is one of the ones that people either collect a card for or just wait to find. Uh, it has socketed gems in it, uh, fire additional projectiles, and then they fire them in a circle. So it kind of changes the way whatever uh, socketed spell you have in in Cyro Shards, uh, the way that it functions, it changes it completely. It gives a little bit of resistances and some increased projectile damage as well. So it's a pretty cool, it's definitely a build around because it changes the way that it works. Uh, for instance, a fireball would fire five fireballs in a circle. Uh, Fidelity Spike is a one-handed sword. It's a, a low-level weapon. Has no fizz damage on it. Does all lightning damage. Has a high attack speed, and even though you're doing just pure lightning damage, you're gaining two life for each enemy hit by attacks. Uh, but it also works really well with Herald of Thunder and gives Herald of Thunder an increased buff. So big early game uh, lightning weapon. We got another claw, the Allure Val Claw. Allure? Allure? Whatever it is. 115% uh, fizz damage... Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a range, but uh, basically a lot of fizz damage, some added fizz damage, uh, and the thing is you have, basically, once you, it gives you phasing. It replaces like a quartz flask. As long as you're using vol skills uh, often, it, you get phasing while you are using uh, vol skills for 10 seconds, and then it gives you even more move speed while you're using it. Maloney's Nightfall uh, has a lot of life, has some chaos resistance, and then it adds fizz damage to your bow attacks and you create smoke clouds uh, when you're hit. You have a chance to create a smoke cloud when you're hit. Uh, and then when you are attacking blind enemies, you're going to deal more damage to them. So kind of a defensive-focused uh, quiver. So pretty cool, pretty rare. Um, almost makes it act like a, a little bit more of a defensive item, like a shield type of item in your offhand. Uh, speaking of shields, here is Zeal's Amplifier. One of the ones I really love this uh, artwork. It's pretty cool, really, really bright uh, symbol on it. Uh, gives you a bunch of spell damage, gives you a decent chunk of energy shield and, and then life, and then um, it gives you a lot of AoE. So the more you're killing enemies, the more AoE that you are getting, and as long as you haven't been hit recently, you actually have uh, Zealot's Oath. If you haven't seen Zealot's Oath before, it applies life regen to your energy shield. Uh, for belts, we got Prism Weave. Prism Weave is really good early uh, leveling item for attack builds, adds all three elements to your attacks, gives you all resistances, uh, and then during flask effects, you have even more elemental damage. So pretty good I early item for elemental attacking builds. I uh, got a couple cool flasks. The writhing jar is one of the really cool. Uh, I don't even know. Can you use it in a hideout? I don't even think. Yeah, you can't use it in a hideout. Um. Anyway, when you use it, uh, it pops out worms on the ground that you can kill. Uh, so kind of kind of crazy. Uh, it's a hybrid flask, so it recovers life and mana. But the big thing that people use it for is to like proc effects when they kill the worms that pop out of it. So very, very cool effect. Uh, you should definitely look up worm blaster builds 
on just do a quick YouTube or Google search for Worm Blaster Path of Exile. Find some pretty cool stuff using this flask uh, that has been powerful enough and, and bizarre enough to have been nerfed multiple times. Blood of the Karui is a very, very cool life flask. Uh, gives you a ton of life recovered. It gives you more recovery rate of that life. And then when the flask effect ends, no matter where you're at, you recover full life. You go to full. Uh, it's a very cool, very powerful life flask. Um, kind of a cool thing. Can't can't really put like suffixes on it like you would on this, for instance, where we have, we have shock removal or bleeding or whatever, but very, very strong recovery effect. Malicious Intent, uh, you... Just It's very simple. You get a chance to gain Unholy Might for 4 seconds on melee kill, which gives you physical damage as extra chaos. Pretty powerful. Uh, and then we got two maps. We got the Malkun Shore map. Uh, it's the one that has the bosses that all over the place. You got to go all over the map and kill the boss a whole bunch of times. Uh, but it has really good loot, typically. has pretty good loot on it. And uh, we got the Putrid Cloister, where players are cursed with a million things. Uh, but the boss drop, as you move through, you fight the boss, and, and I don't want to say three or four times, uh, you fight, I think it's Doidri, right? And then, um, or like a version of her, and then she drops a ton of div cards. Uh, so those are the, the new ones we got, and then we got a Calm Sign, a Red Beak, and a Deed Bell, which is our second copy of all of them for when we get the faded upgrades. Not too shabby, making progress, closing in on 250 uniques. And I think that's actually going to do it for this week's episode. That's a little bit shorter than usual, and that's due to a couple of reasons. So basically just a few less clips than I would have normally used, uh, a few shorter, maybe about 5, 10, 15 minutes shorter than, than usual. Uh, and that is just because, first of all, it was a long holiday weekend, uh, along with the President's Day holiday weekend for in terms of just editing the episode. Uh, kind of ran out of a little bit of time. I had to spend some time working on uh, a family vehicle that had kind of broken down. So, um, yeah, I had to fix that. And then uh, the the massive, like, countrywide storm has made it really difficult to uh, actually play as, as I've needed to, you know, take care of things outside, do all kinds of shoveling, all that, all that type of stuff. So um, just a little bit less time overall. So this episode will be a little bit shorter, but I'll be back. Uh, it will be back in the regular time slot, which is typically about Tuesday uh, morning or Tuesday around noon for next week's episode. So, yeah, that'll do it for this week. Uh, we are getting a lot higher, getting very excited. Um, yeah, that that's that's really that's really it. Just making steady progress as we go. Um, the footage, even even with this week being a few episodes shorter, I am we're slowly catching up on all of the footage. Uh, so hopefully within the next few weeks here, it'll catch all the way up and be much closer to uh, the current footage that I'm currently streaming and uh, recording. So that'll do it. Uh, I appreciate everyone watching and, uh, and continuing to hang out. I am Shaq Central, and I will see you guys next time.